Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Imperator Rome as we are playing as the Roman Republic. Alright, so let's just go ahead and jump into today's episode. I'd really like to make some progress on trying to annex these other countries. Of course, getting that manpower rebuilt back up, uh, maybe reducing some of the aggressive expansion so that we can declare war here. Because, uh, yeah, we are moving pretty slow, guys. We, we haven't made much time up there. And a big part of that has been that tutorial format here, kind of explaining mechanics that takes a while. And then, of course, you know, on my channel, things are always going to go a little bit slower. I do have a little, sl a little bit slower, more talkative style that not everybody enjoys. Some people really like it. Uh, for some people, it's it's not for them though. Uh, they prefer uh, a different style. And luckily, there's a lot of uh, different YouTube channels that cover uh, paradox content. So you have a, a lot of different choices on what style you'd like for your your videos. Are quite spoiled when it comes to uh, paradox content on YouTube. There's a lot of channels that do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and figure out what we're going to get here. I think uh, we could look for horses, but we've tried. But it looks like we actually can hold and get the uh, horses from our new territory. So why not? Let's go ahead and do that. That gets to the heavy cab discipline again. That's that's not very useful since we don't have any heavy cab right now. However, it still gives us the population output of plus 2% here, which is where the majority of our population is. So it's still very much beneficial. But yeah, I do have a more talkative, slower style, and that's you know, with all of my videos. Uh, so it's not for everybody, but um, yeah, a lot of people enjoy that style. But I feel like we have been moving a little bit too slow, and I'd like to make some progress here. And uh, we got a lot of stuff we need to do before we declare war again. You know, we got to burn off this aggressive expansion a bit. Uh, so we could always go up to speed 5, since nothing's happening. Now, what happened with our opinion here? Our opinion just tanked with them. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure. We we did have a much higher opinion, wasn't it? Like 150-something? Maybe I looked at it wrong, but yeah, it looks like it's uh, much lower than it was before. All right, not entirely sure what happened there. Maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I didn't think it was already at 150. Now, how far have we improved it? Uh, we're up to plus nine, so we still got a lot of room left. So maybe I just did misread that there. Oh uh, yeah, we want to try and get these guys annexed if we can. And we're gonna go at speed five here so we can get this going a little bit quicker. And yeah, we want to burn off those aggressive expansions. We don't have any issues there. And we want to build that manpower up too. Uh, and then we'll, we'll keep our eye over here on the population capacity. And you know what? We actually have a building slot and we have money. So might as well. Go ahead and get a, a building going. So we're not going to go with another fort level. Uh, or not right now. I don't think we'll, we'll we'll ever need another fort level, actually. I don't expect to allow anybody to come over here and, and siege room. We have two libraries. Uh, we could get the marketplace uh, to boost up the local base trade routes. And I know that there's probably an optimal route to go with buildings uh, that I haven't figured out yet because I haven't played the game yet long enough uh, to, to really figure out, you know, the optimum uh, buildings to go for. And then, of course, there's always, you know, what you're trying to do with that particular province. I think we're going to go ahead and get the aqueduct. We're getting kind of close to that that uh, population capacity. And this is actually the, the best way to increase population capacity right now, uh, rather than using our political influence, which we do have a bit of, uh, where we could uh, get 2.5%. If you look at our, uh, our current like population capacity, you're not gonna get anywhere near four uh, from that 2.5% right now. Uh, you might get one additional population capacity from that. So this is really the best way to increase population capacity. We do have political influence, and there's two things that I'm, I'm thinking about doing with that. We can either use it here again for the, uh, you know, get the province investments here, or we could wait until we get our stability up a little bit higher so that we can change a law. There are a few laws that I'd like to look at uh, changing. I think we'd be better options than what we're, we're currently on. Uh, we got an event here, the a, a Venomous Tongue. The governor of Apulia is a particularly weasel-like man, a fact that is making itself clear now more than ever. He has begun stirring up the people of his governorate, governorate uh, perhaps hoping to challenge our rule. Unfortunately, he is well guarded in this locale. Uh, our response must be made with care. All right, so that is this governor here, who's actually quite loyal to us right now. Uh, and this is Marcus uh, Claudius Corvus. And... Our choices are to say we cannot move against Marcus, in which case the province will lose loyalty and Marcus will become more corrupt. Or we say a debt of treason must be played in blood, in which case the province will, will lose even more loyalty, quite a bit more, and then we'll be imprisoning Marcus. I see. 
right? So no matter what, we're going to lose loyalty in this province here. Uh, the question is, do we want to keep Marcus there or not? You know, how much we're willing to deal with a rebellious province here, because uh, obviously that's going to have effect as well. Uh, what is this corruption going up from? Just kind of curious here. Uh, it should actually be going down. Yeah, he must have did something uh, to get that up a little bit, but it's not currently going up. Yeah, so it's really a question of, I, I feel like Marcus is, is fine uh, for the leader here. Yeah, I don't see any reason to, to remove him. Uh, he's old too, so he'll likely die soon. Uh, I do not want to lose that much loyalty with the overall province, as that'll be a constant problem even after Marcus leaves. So we'll, we'll go and do this one. Uh, I think that's probably the best one. Obviously that corruption will impact our income a little bit, but it's not, it's not too bad. Do want to make sure we're not paying anybody that we don't need to. Our heralds bring us news of war in Africa. The Punic Senate, known for their vice, greed, and wickedness, have taken it upon themselves to expand their hegemony further. All right, so they are trying to... Are they attacking them? Yes, they did attack these guys here. So essentially this is asking us if we want to send them aid, in which case they'll get an opinion boost with us. And I don't see any reason not to send them aid, uh, cause Carthage issues, considering the fact that they are gonna be a future, uh, future enemy. And we got a little bit of money to send them, so yeah, we'll do that. Send them some aid, we'll get a little opinion boost. I do expect they'll probably be conquered, though, pretty quickly. And thus, uh, I don't think that money's going to do much. Uh, but yeah, we'll try. Just cause more issues. Maybe they'll, uh, well, they won't be able to raise any units. Because, uh, yeah, I doubt they have a legion. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know how much effect it'll have, but it was, uh, I'm sure it's helpful a little bit. Bountiful Harvest. Word has arrived that this year's harvest was exceptionally good in the, this territory here. Whilst the mer um, merchants may be holding their heads in their hands, the people rejoice at the plummeting price of bread. So we can say the people will, re will rejoice, and that will give us increased stability. Or we can say perhaps we should limit the drop in price, in which case we'll get approval from the bony, and we'll also receive a bit of income. Hmm... All right, well, we're already taking up towards 50 stability, so getting up to that doesn't help that much. Uh, as far as the approval with the bony, I don't think that's really all that uh, helpful, considering the fact they're not uh, very powerful. As you can see here, they only have 11 control. But yeah, we could boost their opinion. Why not? They have the lowest opinion, and we can always use that money. Uh, I don't uh, see a point on getting this stability unless we're already above uh, 50, and we're starting to see the negative here. Yeah, in this case, it just gets up to, up to 50. And I did forget that we do have a mission that is done. It kind of sucks that this has been notifying is notifying us of this one here, which I don't think we're going to do, guys. Uh, but we do have one other than that one available, and that's Crush the Samnites, uh, which we got from controlling those three provinces. This is going to increase the popularity of our consul, and Rome will be able to fall, found a colony in conquered territory. And the uh, province, or the state as we're going to call it here, is going to be getting a negative 5% to population happiness. However, they're going to be assimilating much faster. All right, so let's go and take that decision and see what uh, options we have on the event for the conquest of the Samnites. At last, the stubborn Samnite tribes have been forced to accept the superiority of Roman arms. These wars will go into the annals of time with the victory over Lars Porsena uh, and the rape of the Sabians. With newly conquered territory comes the inevitably the inevitable parceling of land and distribution of promises. But it is up for us to decide which township will become the Roman hub of the area. Okay, so we can kind of pick like the, the capital of the area. Alright, so basically our three choices are this province here, says it's the capital here already, and uh, they already have 22 pops. They make horses here. That's what they produce. Uh, the other option would be this province here, producing livestock. Not a very high population right now, and of course that is uh, that's this one right here. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't really call that a city. Not very many people there now. Uh, and then the other option would be this one here, which is the Samnite Fortress. That is where we decided to keep our fortress as well. So it makes sense to put it there because you're protecting all your pops in, in your city. The other option would be to build it here on the coast, but I feel like we already have some stuff on the coast here with Naples being right there, or, or Neapolis, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, yeah, I kind of feel like this would be the best option because we have the fort there and we can protect it, and we can just keep the fort there. So yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it there in the Samnite Fortress. Uh, it doesn't really change what happens here, it just changes where it happens. Uh, although it might... Oh, okay, uh, it shows you the, the trade goods. I was gonna say maybe it, tra it changes the trade goods. It just tells you what the the current trade goods are. 
Uh, so that's going to allow us to get more olives. Uh, olives are great for the uh, the fact that they help with the slave happiness, which is always pretty low. I, I don't know why people are so unhappy about being uh, slaves. Uh, so it's one way to boost it. I don't know why olives would make a slave feel better about their lives, but apparently it does. Uh, that's the secret uh, to keeping slaves happy. So I think we're going to do this one here. And, you know, the reason why um, this is is important uh, as far as the the actual trade good is because you know wherever you build your your key city it's going to result in in more of that trade good so yeah i think that'll be helpful maybe we'll send some of those off to rome you know is uh ship off uh you know some of those olives here once we get another uh another slot open although i don't think you're ever gonna get slaves to be happy uh, you can reduce the number of like slave revolts and stuff you'll have uh, you know, if you can increase that happiness. So, the yeah, olives do help. And it looks like we actually have another uh, mission done as well. Okay, so we'll take a look at that in a second. I want to see what this is. Oh, the election. The election is happening. So, here in the game, the Roman Republic has an election every five years. Uh, so, of course, in real life, the consuls were elected every year, which is the reason why it says the year of Publius and Publius. Uh, I guess I have the same first name here. I'd actually like to talk about Roman la names at some point. We won't do it just now, but maybe a little bit later in the video, uh, if I can if I can remember to. Uh, but yeah, they used to elect their consuls every year, but the reason why Paradox decided not to do that is because having an election every year in this game would, would probably be a bit much. I know some people would prefer that it be more accurate. Personally, I think it's... It's probably a, a good design choice to not have elections every year because therefore the consoles just become irrelevant uh, because years fly by in this game. Uh, this is not real life, this is a video game. So I think it makes sense. However, if you want it to be more accurate, there's actually a law that allows you to change that. Now you can't make it one year from my understanding, but you can make it so that you have it every two years. So this law right here would change the election term duration by negative three, in which case you'd have an election every two years. You can also increase it so you have an election every 10 years. Of course, you also have the option to, to make election durations every 45 years, which means they'll probably always be your console. Uh, so yeah, you can reduce it some. Maybe not quite to a year, but you can do it to two years if, if you so desire. Uh, so yeah, we have an election incoming. Uh, this would really just be if we wanted to influence uh, who was going to be elected at all. Uh, looking at the current support, uh, we can see that... Isn't this the, the new family? Yeah, I think this might be the new family. If I'm not mistaken, let me just double check on that. Uh, no, no, no. This, I think this is the new family, the the blue one, right? Yeah, I think the blue family might be the new one. All right, I was thinking it was the green one. It's it's the Desi. All right, so uh, not the the new family. Yeah, the other two two older families here. Uh, so they'll be coming in. Uh, Cornelius and and Claudius. Uh, those two families will be coming in here. And one of them is named Publius as well, and the other one's named Marcus. Again, we'll talk about naming conventions here in a little bit. Uh, but one of them is the governor, uh, and the other one is the Pontifex Maximus. Okay, so that, those two positions will open up as they become consul, and we'll be able to appoint somebody else there. Uh, so those will be the two ruling families. We're not going to do anything to impact that. I mean, we might want to look at his stats, just make sure they're not terrible. And, and it looks like he's actually got some pretty good stats. Yeah, these are not... These are not bad stats at all. Yeah, I actually like this guy's stats. As far as his, his skills, uh, it looks like we'll have... He's got two level eight here. Want we'll to take a look at his his uh, co-console and see what his stats are. I, I think he'll... Uh, the, the main console, all his stats will probably be the ones to apply. Because we've got eight, six, seven, and five here. Eight, six, seven. Yeah, so it'll be all his, his stats. And that's not bad. I, I think it might be a downgrade in certain areas while an upgrade in others so yeah not bad we'll, we'll we'll leave it leave it as is and not try and get involved in that at all uh so our mission that we finish up here uh vanquish the lucanians and this is going to again increase the popularity of our current console which means we might want to wait until we have a new console come in yeah, that would make sense. If we're going to have this console leave, then then there's no reason to increase its popularity. And, and what we're getting is obviously going to be helpful, but it only lasts for 10 years, so might as well wait. There's no reason to rush it, guys. We'll wait until the till the election happens, uh, which is going to be on the 1st of October, so very, very soon. Uh, so wait for that to happen. And let's go ahead and turn this down just a notch here. Uh, see what all has happened. We got the election, uh, so that's great. And... He's part of the Optimates, too. That's something we should have 
uh, checked as well as uh, what parties these two guys were from. He's from the Ultimates. So they were the ones in power before. It makes sense. Uh, they actually have a lot less control uh, than they used to, I think. Looks like the Popularis have gotten uh, quite a bit of control, which is the reason why they have Marcus in power here. All right, very interesting. He's got cancer, so he might not live long. Uh, here in Inheritor Rome, it's a little bit different than uh, some other Paradox games, uh, particularly uh, the CK series, where you can see the, the health here, uh, the exact health, and you can see it ticking down. I, I don't really like that, personally, that you always know when somebody's going to die, uh, pretty much. Uh, once it gets to zero, the character dies. I, I don't really like that mechanic. I think that's it's too clear. Uh, you know, Who knows when people are going to die. Uh, so he has cancer, and he's losing his health. I think he's going to just barely last through his, his, console, uh, his console term, but he might get another... Uh, health penalty here because he's pretty darn old so i don't think he's gonna live through this this entire console term uh, our our main console is 55 years old uh, we have an event here civic concerns the leader of a faction commonly concerned with civic matters has proposed a potentially favorable deal in return for a brief tax relief on the wealthy he assures us that we can rely on the support of a portion of the old elite for a significant period so we can say we can afford to spare the revenue which case we'll lose 10% uh, national tax and we'll get approval from the bony uh, faction. Or we can say there is no need for this compromise and that's kind of the way I feel. They're the weakest faction. So I keep forgetting where that damn uh, government screen is. It's way up here. Uh, they're still really, really weak and we have approval to, to you know lose. Although it looks like we're actually going to lose approval with him, uh, the leader here. But you know what? That's absolutely fine. Yeah, I'm okay with that, guys. Uh, so one other thing we should take a look here, and that I, and I didn't look at yet, uh, and I didn't show you guys, and we should have uh, looked at that uh, previously with with the uh, previous uh, console, is the agenda. We'll take a look at that as soon as we pick an option here, which I think we're just going to lose the loyalty. I was going to pause it, and let's look at the agenda. So the agenda this time is to pass a law. So Rome has enacted the senatorial endorsement law. And if we do that, then we get 10 approval from the Optimates. So this is one way to, to get approval from the factions. There can be other effects as well that can be pretty good. Uh, but this is the main purpose of it, is to get to get approval. Uh, so they want, let's see where this law is, uh, senatorial endorsement. So this is the assembly endorsement law. So that's what they want that makes sense for the Optimates. I don't know that that's the one we'll go with. We really don't have the stability for changing laws right now yet. So we're not going to be doing that just yet. And I don't even know if that's the route we're going to go. Now, because the, uh, pro the I think it was the co-consul that was, yeah, I think the co-consul was formerly the governor here. Uh, we do need to appoint a new governor. And then we also need to appoint a new Pontifex Maximus. Uh, before we do that, though, we should take a look at the families and see how we're doing here. So we still have the, the Fabii, which I've been calling the Fabii. I think it's Fabii. We still have them quite content with us. They're grateful, happy that we've given them so many positions, so we don't really need to give them any more positions. Really, there's nobody we have to give positions to, but if we do give one position to the Claudii family, uh, then that would result in them being grateful. We also want to make sure that our, our co-consul's family is happy, which I'm not entirely sure which family he's with. Oh, okay, so yeah, he's with the Claudii, so it would make sense to, uh, if he's him, considering how powerful he is. So yeah, maybe we might do uh, them, give them one of these two appointments uh, that we need to make. And then the other one could really go with anybody. We'll just pick the best best candidate. Uh, considering that the, the governor position is so important, I think this might be the one that we just appoint anybody. Uh, though it does look like the Fabii family here does have the, the best candidate as far as finesse goes and Marshall. He would be a fantastic choice. If we wanted to go a little bit more with the Marshall, uh, we could go with Lucius here. Uh, he's uh, slightly better uh, in the Marshall, slightly worse in the Finesse. Uh, let's just take a look at his stat here. He would also improve the Commerce as a governor, while Publius would not do that. And we've already got a grateful family here. And I, I do like having a person in place here as a governor who is not part of the families. That's often... Uh, a little bit safer. He's about the same age, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, Loyalty is about the same as well. And uh, this guy's really, really popular, so... Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and put him in place. Uh, I think he would be the best option. I'd like to have a little bit higher Marshall. Uh, so yeah, we're going to put him in place here. 
And then with the Pontifex Maximus, we really don't have a choice unless we want to rotate offices around because we do have to put, uh, I want to put somebody in here for, ooh, was it the, the Claudii family? I've already forgotten. Yeah, the Claudii family. Just want to make sure. Uh, so he's actually the best choice. Yeah, level 10 with the zeal. That yeah, just works out uh, perfectly. And he's also quite loyal already. And he's going to get even more loyal with that appointment. So we're going to get very good political influence. So yeah, that was a great pick. Yeah, that worked out nicely. All worked out. It was all planned, of course. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this mission done. Increase the popularity of Publius, which he's already quite popular. And uh, get that pop assimilation speed. And it looks like we can just keep on going down these uh, because we've already conquered so much here. One more meddling jealous Italic tribe vanquished by Rome's might. This will teach our neighbors the price of scheming with Greeks and maintaining jealous feuds in the face of an inev inevitable defeat. With newly conquered territory comes the inevitable parceling of land. So yeah, we read that part here. So uh, again, we just need to pick out a location for uh, the, the capital, so to speak here. And after a period of reduced output, the city will be constructed. Okay, so we're actually going to be building a city in these locations. Can't just say we will not get involved with detailed planning. Uh, but I don't know why we wouldn't want to do that. It seems like these are pretty good bonuses here. And let's just figure out exactly where these two are and see where we'd want to go. So there's one right there. It's right there. There we go. All right, so we already have a fort located here. Uh, so we will have to build a city. It's got four pops currently compared to the 12 pops that are over here. Uh, I think we might base this off of the trade good. Uh, furs for the local tri uh, tribes when happiness is just not as good. I mean, I, I guess livestock isn't fantastic either, but it's okay. Yeah, so maybe we'll just go with that. Plus, we have the fort here as well, so it makes sense. I know these guys have a higher population, uh, but I don't know what else would uh, we would consider here besides population and trade good. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll we'll go with the the fact that we have a, a fort there, and it's better trade good. Yeah, we'll go with that, with the livestock. It's a, we'll call it a hill vanguard. All right, uh, so we do have another decision, excuse me, mission that we finished up here, uh, approach Greeks. So we can do this if we have not taken a diplomatic task in the last 100 days. This just allows diplomatic negotiations with all the Hellenistic states over here in Southern Italy. So what I would imagine is gonna happen is that we can Probably make them our subjects and there's there's good and bad to that you know obviously we don't have to do a war to conquer them which would probably wouldn't be that hard because I think we could probably conquer most of them all and uh yeah like these two guys are allied here these guys all seem to be allied here and so it does seem like you could probably get yeah this is all one war here it's about three wars to probably get most of these done um, where if we make them our puppets I don't know if there's any way to like quickly annex them I'm not entirely sure if Rome will have like a mission for that. We could always dip in here and see if there's anything that will result in us like quickly annexing them. Because uh, otherwise, I think it would be quicker just to do the damn war. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think that might be the way that we'd want to go. Is uh, to just annex them rather than do that. I don't know. Let me know your guys' opinion. Uh, I, I can see the, the subject states being beneficial for a little while. But of course, the annexations take a while. Uh, they're not exactly like easy or, or quick to do. Well, one of the reoccur reoccurring agendas of the Optimates is the need to pass laws that will benefit them in one way or another, either ensuring their influence or else making sure they do not see more of the Novus Homo, which is new men, in the Senate than absolutely necessary. The other parties look to Publius Cornelius Barbados to put an end to this law before it makes it makes it to a vote. So I did want to, to talk about the Roman naming conventions real quick, just for those of you who are curious how you know their names uh, work. So they do have uh, these three names. So we'll start with the, the middle name, since this is the most easy to, to understand. That is the, the family name, what we, we call here in the game, the family name. And you know the, this guy here is from the Cornelii family, and uh, so he has the the middle name of Cornelius. Now, if you looked at this character here, oh, he, he only has two names. Uh, so the reason for that is because he doesn't have a third name. I'm gonna close this here. Uh, so his family name is the Decius. So he's part of the Decii family. And so that's that would be his, his middle name if he had the full three names here. 
And so that fits with their, their family name. The last name is like the tribal name, and it's, it's like the specific branch of the, the family here. And it, they all pretty much originate from some nickname. Uh, typically, they got like a nickname from like uh, controlling a certain region, or maybe they had the nickname of the great, like you know, Pompey Magnus. And they'd get nicknames from other places as well, like if they had risen up from... Uh, from like a more lower position, then they might have a name that reflects that. Uh, or if they came from a certain region, they're born from a certain region, they have a name that reflects that. Uh, so that's where the name comes from, and it would be passed down from father to son. And that's why not everybody has a third name. Now, most uh, noble Romans by this period in history, uh, they would have a third name, and particularly by the late Roman Republic, they would have uh, a third name, uh, pretty much all the most prominent ones. And so that was the basically the same name as the father. So this character, if he had a son, his son's name would still be Cornelius Barbados or ba- Barbados. Uh, so he would have the same name. And if you were to refer to one over the other, then you'd you'd call the the father the elder. And uh, so Cornelius Barbados the elder, and the the son would be called the younger. And the only real difference would be the first name. And even that's not always always uh, different, but typically it was uh, different. Uh, again, not always though. They only had like 15 to, to 30 names given the, you know the period that you're in. They didn't have very many names that were used. Uh, Publius is, is one of them. Uh, another one would be Gaius. Uh, so there, there weren't very many first names used. Uh, not like you know here in, in the modern world where we have so many hundreds and hundreds of different first names that you'll see in a society. Uh, the Romans did not have a, a lot of different names that they would they would use for that first name. Now, with the first name, you typically only use that as in your childhood. Uh, people who are really close to you, like family members, would probably still call you that maybe even after you, you left childhood. Maybe they didn't, though. Uh, but it was really more the, the childhood name, and, and really only uh, like really close people would use that name. Uh, typically, you would be referred to at, by your third and last name. So it would be like Gaius Julius Caesar. Most people called him Caesar. As far as the Julius, you know, that's everybody who is in his family would have that name Julius. So uh, was almost never used. Uh, nobody would call him Julius uh, typically. Now, uh, sometimes they would say Gaius Julius. So in this case, we'd say Publius Cornelius. And you'd say the full name if you weren't trying to uh, uh, use the, the third name. But most often it would be the, the middle and, and last name. Uh, so that's what I was talking about with the elder and younger. If you had a father or a son, that's how you'd you know not get confused between the two of them. And and most often, uh, officially, you'd be called you know in this case Cornelius Barbatus or Julius Caesar. Uh, that's how you get that that typical name there. Very rarely do you say the the full name. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a different naming convention uh, than you'll see in other countries here in the game. Not everybody uses the the Roman system uh, of naming. So. I was going to get something picked here. We can say, and yet this law seems fair. And that would actually institute the senatorial endorsement for us without us actually having to spend any stability to do it. And uh, we'd also get some political influence. And because the party agenda has been achieved, the optimates would be happy with us. Or we say, and we put an end to this, but Publius is going to use his console vault, uh, vote anyway. Um, now, I don't, because I've never played as Rome with this new system, because the old system before was much different. Um, I, this might not actually stop us from doing it. Yeah, I think it just results in us uh, making them very unhappy. Uh, despite the fact, you know, it's a veto, so the idea is that with a, a console veto, you know, it stops you. Uh, but I think we can still go this way, and it would just decrease their opinion by a lot. Uh, so it would result in us pissing them off uh, quite a bit. Uh, so it's. It's a tough choice here because I don't know that that's the route we wanted to go. Uh, the other options, one benefit though is we're not spending the political influence and stability for getting this. Uh, but the other options would be go with the Senatoriate Assembly, which would uh, make both the Optimates and the Boney happy. It would just uh, irritate the, the Popularis faction. And then we get Fabricate Claim Costs, negative 50%. So it'd be a lot, lot cheaper uh, to fabricate claims. This reduces tyranny and it would really only please the bony. Everybody else wouldn't like it. The optimates uh, would really hate it. This is the curate assembly. Or you go with the senatorial assembly as the optimates want. This enables the senatorial war council government interaction. It looks like they all enable, or excuse me, two of them enable government interactions. We could take a look at those so we can see the full effect of this choice here. 
And uh, this will result in us getting more monthly political influence. Uh, as far as the active benefit, I feel like that might be the best one. Uh, fabricate clean cost is helpful though. But yeah, I, I think that this one would probably be the best one to get, guys. Yeah, uh, so let's just take a look at those government interactions. So this is a summary, summon the Curate Assembly. And so what this basically does here is allows us to boost the capabilities of our appointed governors every 10 years. Uh, while this one here, again, we can only enact every 10 years, and we can use it to provide a, a claim on a province. Uh, so kind of offsets the, the, the one bonus that you're getting uh, for this one here with the Fabricate Claim Cost. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, you're getting free claims uh, by doing that. All right. Uh, I mean, I kind of feel like this is this is probably the best way to go, uh, you know, because we're getting to do it ch uh, for free without having to reduce that stability, which is really nice. I also don't have to pay the, uh, you know, the political influence. So I think that this is probably the best route to go. we got a free law change. Now, what we're losing is the monthly corruption negative 10. That was helpful to have. Uh, cause we, that was, as we saw before, ticking down the corruption of, of several of our characters. We can now enact another omen. Uh, looks like the, oh yep, Etruria is currently, yeah, Etruria is currently at war with them and they are the ones who expanded here, uh, conquering all that territory. So we now have another rival in Italy that is a little bit more powerful, uh, but they're only half the strength of them. So I do expect they're, they're probably gonna lose that conflict. Uh, it looks like they're also conquering them here. Hmm, that's interesting. Because if we wait to the end of this conflict, which remember we can't declare war on them until 58, 458, we might be able to just conquer all this territory, you know, assuming that they win. Uh, and just one conflict rather than what would have been, I was thinking, at least, uh, at least two conflicts, because I think these two are allied. So yeah, that would actually be quite helpful. And maybe we'll leave them alone, let them do their thing. We're still, you know, repairing our manpower and burning down aggressive expansions. We're not ready to declare war yet anyways. And yeah, I kind of feel like the next war should be against them. Uh, so some people want to trade for our wine. Uh, a lot of people are wanting to trade for our wine. Uh, just kind of dip through and see exactly who we'd like to trade with. Uh, some of these are pretty far away here. All right, so a lot of those are up there in Gaul. And I guess we'll, we'll trade with them. It doesn't really matter. These are all pretty much the same here for us, for our purposes. They're all going to give us the same amount of money. Oh, yes, the omen uh, that I didn't call. Because I, I wanted to, to wait to see if I wanted to uh, to do this for the discipline. But, yeah, if we're not going to declare war just yet, let's let's do something else. There's a lot of other beneficial stuff. National commerce income, I don't know how much that will boost us. Just looking at our commerce income, probably not much. Yeah, it's not going to boost it by a whole lot. Uh, the other option would be to uh, reduce the aggressive expansion quicker. That's always helpful. Uh, or to get the integrated culture happiness by plus 12%. That'd be really nice to get as well. All right, well, I think we should do the aggressive expansion so we can burn that off a little bit quicker. And then what we'll do is we'll do another war down uh, against somebody else. Not entirely sure who yet. Could attack these guys here. They have a truce, but yeah, they're not in any conflict. Uh, we don't neighbor them, though. Uh, we could attack through our, our allied territory, though. Uh, so that'd be one option. Or we could come and attack down here. Or against any of these other smaller countries. Again, this would end up being one conflict. All right, so I don't think we'll need discipline for any of those wars. Uh, but yeah, being able to get the aggressive expansion burned off quicker would be helpful. So let's go ahead and do that. That's one uh, advantage of having Jupiter, uh, which is the equivalent of Zeus. That's one advantage of having uh, Jupiter as our deity. All right, so yeah, we'll burn it off a bit more and then I think we'll, we'll try and declare war down here somewhere and, and just let them uh, conquer some territory up here, which will make more powerful and we'll have a big one, one big war to get all that. So it'll be more difficult conflicts, but uh, it'll be funner because of that. I like a, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, before we were probably still gonna roll over them despite the fact that they were uh, you know, the closest in power here in Italy. The insanity of Consul Publius. Publius, ordinarily a man of sound mind and superlative business acumen, has been acting unusually. His personal advisor reports that uh, Consul Publius has started slavering at the mouth, uttering inane nonsenses, even proposing marriage to each and every member of his Senate in the space of an hour. We think that he may have finally cracked. Oh dear. Uh, so he's gonna get the lunatic trait, which drastically reduces his stats 
Uh, it does actually increase some stats, though. Uh, Charisma and Zeal will be increased. Uh, he does start losing a little bit of health. Uh, or I guess it kind of it's a, kind of a trade-off. Uh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, you, you're losing the the Marshal and uh, the the Chari No, no, no. Excuse me, the Finesse. So his Finesse wasn't all that high any damn way. So I think that our our co-consul would take those over, and then these would become ten. Uh, it's much higher. Uh, so it's kind of just a trade-off here. Uh, you do start losing the health, but that probably won't affect us uh, as long as we're console here. Or you say summon the wisest minds in the land. And I don't know, I think it would be interesting because the lunatic trait enables some particularly unusual event options. So let's go with that just because it'd be fun. Uh, one thing about our CK th uh, CK3 roleplay series is I'm always waiting to play as an insane character so we can just act insane, and we never get to because uh, I think we've only had one insane character uh, that's that's ever come up, and I want to say that was in maybe one of the CK2 series, not the CK3 ones, and he died not long after he he came to the throne. So I've never got to play as an insane character uh, in those roleplay series. So I think it'd be interesting to do some insane options here. Uh, building bridges. Uh, while there is always a certain degree of towing and froing between the incumbent leaders of Rome, Consul Publius and his co-consul Marcus are disagreeing more and more. Uh, that's probably because Publius is insane. Uh, until now, the topics have been fairly minor and had little effect on the state, but the rulers' differences are now threatening to spill into the public sphere. Whether as a result of personal animosity or malicious stubbornness, Marcus has been organized opposition to an ambitious public works bill promised an election campaign of Publius matter close to his heart so this is construction of aqueduct here encouraging further growth okay so let me just see uh what our choices are here we say this bill will be passed in which case marcus would lose loyalty he's already pretty loyal though and uh the event chain will begin or we can say marcus will want something in which case he'll gain loyalty and uh will won't increase our political influence it makes sense it's a trade-off if you want support from your co-consul then you need to give him something as well so yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I think that makes sense. Uh, we have plenty of loyalty to, to lose here when it comes to Marcus, but yeah, I think we're going to do this one, guys. All right, let's go ahead and, and spend this money and maybe even spend the, the political influence, too. We can go ahead and do that as well. Uh, we don't have any stability to, to lose yet, so we won't be able to change the law. Uh, we'll probably just go ahead and invest it over here in, in a provincial investment. Uh, we can also take a look and see if our console has any particular options that we might want to, to do here. Uh, nah, not really seeing anything. We can't grant him another holding. Yeah, we won't do that. Uh, we don't have any, any reason to grant him a holding right now. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and, and see what we want to do. So, population capacity is actually doing pretty darn good right now. Uh, possible buildings, we are at the max, so we might want to increase that. Another option would be to get another trade route. Yeah, I think what we're going to do is go ahead and get a local building slot here, guys. Yeah, let's get a local building slot. And when that's done, we're going to use our money to, to construct something. All right, excellent. Uh, so after this event, I think we're going to go ahead and start getting ready for the, the conflict. These opinions are, are taking forever to get up. Uh, I don't know how much further we can... Yeah, we actually have a lot of room there. Uh, so we don't need to give a gift. Uh, we could give a gift to, to speed it up. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Just because I don't, I don't think we'd get it high enough. Yeah, we'd still need to uh, to wait a little bit. Uh, progress in the Senate. So Consul Publius and Co-Consul Co Marcus have been meeting in private for the last week, debating the merits of the proposed work bills, uh, which Marcus has no specific grievance with the opposed bill, even praising its scope and ingenuity. Ultimately, he is adamant that more investment must be directed towards the neglected charity and pension interests of his faction in order for them to gather their support for the Consul. The proposed changes will, however, cost slightly more than we had planned to implement and take the attention a related administration for a while. So we can say, we, why must we always scrape? And this will result in Consul Publius trying to push his agenda anyways, upsetting co-consul Marcus. And we just lose the political influence. And yeah, so we don't want to do that. We can say we can't afford to alienate the co-consul, in which case Publius would lose a little bit of popularity. Marcus would become more loyal. But we're going to lose some approval from the automates. Now, the province will become grateful, increasing the happiness, and it's not all that costly. Uh, I think the optimates are pretty happy overall. Yeah, we got them at 100 approval, so we can sacrifice that. Yeah, we need to keep our co-consul happy. That makes sense, uh, of course. So 
Let's go and start looking at who we want to declare war on and see if we have the, the claims here. I don't, I don't know that we actually do have claims on anybody. Uh, in fact, it's probably better just take a look and see exactly what claims we currently have, CBs, that we can use. You know what? It looks like we can only do it on these two here. All right, so that's unfortunate. Now, we could declare war on him while he's in the middle of the conflict in 458. That would always be an option. Uh, let me see these decisions here. Do these grant any claims, or is this all after we conquer them? Yeah, it looks like this is all after we've conquered them. All right, so, yeah, I guess we'll just go ahead and start working on, on getting a claim then. Yeah, I guess that's the best way of doing it. So we might want to take a look and see who's allied with who, so that we can try and get the most countries involved in this one conflict, just to make it easier. So these guys actually have two alliances with both of them. So that's the one you want to attack if you want to conquer all three of them. Uh, we could also just try and conquer these three here. That would make sense as well. Or we could go this way. All right, well, let's go and go. This would be a nice, easy conflict in time for us to uh, go and attack up north. So I think that's the, the one we're going to want to do. And we're going to fabricate that for the province here. And costing us just a little bit of political influence. All right, excellent. So, yeah, we'll work on that. Uh, it's going to take a while. Okay, so uh, we're also... Working on, what are we working on here? Okay, this is a city construction. I was wondering what that was. That's right, the uh, the mission that we did constructed a city there because it was just a territory. Now we can always construct cities wherever we want. Uh, so if we wanted to construct a city here, uh, then that is a possibility. Uh, so yeah, you can just do it through here. You see all the, the different options and it looks like this is actually, yeah, this is a settlement. So to found a city, you can see it costs 200 gold, uh, 50, political influence and thus we cannot do that because we don't have 200 gold uh, but yeah we can always do that and we have some pirate problems yep we have uh, 14 ships here well they've already raided us I think yeah I think they've already raided us now I'm not sure which province they raided because I missed that plundered right here so we're already been plundered by pirates we could chase them down but uh, the problem here is that we have to increase the uh, you know increase our fleet maintenance up in order to even be able to attack them, we'd have to use all of our ships as well. And uh, they'll already be gone. Uh, so it's just uh, one of the negatives, unfortunately. You kind of got to, like, you really got to have your uh, ships already paid for. Because I do assume they're going to leave. Yep, and they'll leave. So by the time we would have gotten our morale back up in order to even be able to fight them, they would have already been gone. Uh, it's just uh, one of the negatives. Uh, you know, you can keep your ships paid for, so you can always fight them off. But really, you have to deal with all the little uh, centers where the pirates are, are at. And we also have a, a cute event we need to look at here. Uh, so we're at 44%. Uh, so let's take a look at this little quick event. Our financial encouragement of the local cults in the province of Latium has led to the renovation of old shrines and the construction of new. So that's actually going to give us... Oh, that's, that's right. Uh, we, that was a provincial investment that we just did. Okay. Uh, so we didn't even need to look at that. And so therefore we now have another building slot uh, to make use of. And let's see exactly what we would like to get here. We have quite a few nobles uh, located here. Uh, if we looked at the current pop ratios, the noble pop ratio is sitting at 16%, 30% uh, for our citizens, 33% uh, for the freemen, and 6% uh, for tribesmen. Uh, I think that's actually going down though. And 13% for the slaves. Uh, so the pop ratios aren't bad. Uh, yeah, I feel like this is, is probably pretty decent uh, where we'd want it to be at. Uh, we probably want to get the tribesmen down a, a little bit more. There's no reason to have those here, but it looks like they're already ticking down. I don't think I've showed this screen at all, uh, but this screen shows you everything that you need to know in regards to the pops in a, a state so or a province. Uh, we, we can see here that the... Uh, uh, culture uh, simulation. You can see the exact rate that that's happening and when it will be done and who they're currently assimilating. We can see the religious sim uh, assimilation as well. Of course, we can say the, the promotion from one class to another. Uh, so demotion and promotion. See the pop ratios. You can see all the pops that are here and, and who's migrating to this province. Uh, we look at the growth. Everything you need to see is, is here. Uh, you can also uh, stop slave promotion. Uh, so there's a lot of different things you can do uh, through this screen. Uh, it's mostly information, I should say. Uh, but yeah, it's very, very helpful. Uh, but if we were to take a look at like one of the states that uh, we just got and we have those bonuses, you can see here uh, we got a much, much higher rate 
uh, than we did in Rome, 1.26%. So we are assimilating the culture there much quicker, which is very important because remember, we haven't given any rights to these people yet. So we need them to assimilate if we want to get units from them uh, for our levies. All right, so could go and build up the, the fleet a little bit larger. Now, we don't really need it for these guys here, but those you see that pirate fleet was about the, the size of us. And it seems that Gaius Claudius Crassus has died. He was a researcher, part of the Claudii family. So we're going to have to get a new person appointed here, which remember, if we want to keep them uh, grateful with us, and they don't have to be from their family. Uh, so let's just see if there's even anybody who's a good choice uh, for Marshall that is from that family. It seems that that's a no. All right, well, we could appoint uh, Cornelii here. He's 53 years old. Yeah, we could appoint him. I'd really like to get the highest rate, though. So you know what? We might just not be able to appoint anybody. Uh, so we'll, we'll see if there's any other options here because this here is actually not the, the best. So what we might want to do... And just kind of redo this a little bit. Uh, though he's not, it's not terrible, but yeah, certainly a, a little bit worse than he could be. So maybe we'll just kind of readjust everything and I'll just kind of take a look and see uh, what we can do. Uh, we don't want to put anybody else who's not in a family though. We've already kind of kind of done that, enough of that. Uh, we could move this guy into here and this is just rotating these two. Of course that pisses off this character because we fire him. Uh, but yeah, that would appease that family more. So let's just take a look, see where we're at now. Three or two here, four or two here. So we still would have to get one more uh, position to them. I'm not sure which which one we'd want to give because we have some pretty good characters all throughout here. And yeah, no uh, open open positions that I can see. Yeah, we might just not have them grateful. Uh, we don't have any uh, loyalty issues right now, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, we'll just wait. I uh, might want to start building in other provinces now than just Rome. Oh, I never did get a, a building here. I got distracted. Uh, so, yeah, let's go and get something constructed here. Uh, I don't remember what I got distracted with, but uh, talking with, talking about something. Uh, so, yeah, we want to get something else going here. Uh, I kind of want to get another marketplace. I'd like to get more trade routes. And yeah, that'd be helpful. That'd be one way of doing it without having to use it through the uh, provincial system to get trade routes. And there are other advantages to this as well. We assimilate pops a lot quicker. With how many pops are going to be moving to Rome, that might be really useful. Uh, being able to assimilate them to Roman uh, quicker. Okay, now I'd love your guys' input on the buildings because I haven't exactly figured out the uh, most optimal way to do the, the buildings just yet. Uh, now we could keep going to the aqueduct so that we can have that population capacity really high. And the library so we can research uh, the fastest. I almost want to do another library actually. And that has a pop conversion speed bonus too. You know what? Let's do another library. It's really important to be able to research faster, I find. And, oh yes, that's right. We're waiting for this. I was like, I knew we were waiting on something. Couldn't remember what. So we've got them up to, to 64% here. So I don't think we'll be able to declare war on them this episode, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, xenophobia. Uh, heated debates in the Senate are not uncommon, especially where so many prominent members of society are involved. Lately, a wave of xenophobia has swept across Rome, resulting in foreign values being regarded with great distrust. All in attendance at today's debate agreed, however, that Publius uh, crossed the line today when he accused Consul Publius of indulging in barbaric... I have no idea what word that is. Uh, that's a culture, though. Uh, practices. Tale taliotic? <laughs> yeah, I'm probably butchering that. Uh, so we can say turn the other cheek, in which case uh, Publius would gain prominence in popularity as well. Uh, so that that's this Publius. We have two Publius here. Again, there weren't very many names uh, for the first names, guys. Uh, so sometimes I wonder if it wouldn't be better to, to call them by their last names because we're going to see a lot less people with the last names. Uh, you know, I'm just calling them by the first names because that's uh, the one that the game uses. But man, we're going to see all these different Publiuses, so it's, it's kind of a bit more confusing. So here we could just call them Barbados and then uh, Sophus. So Sophus would get prominence and, and popularity, while he would also lose a bit of loyalty. Or you say, well, Publius is practically uh, Bellovacian, uh, so that would result in our character gaining popularity and prominence, and they'd start seeing each other as rivals. And he's a, a researcher. Okay, um, you know, let's do that. It sounds like something that we would, would say about our, our own character. Uh, so yeah, we'll go with that one. 
and we're almost to 190 here. We could easily just get them and then get it up to 190. But we can be patient and wait rather than spend the money. I know we have uh, plenty of money. We'll cost money for this conflict though. And I almost want to get more ships uh, because we will actually have to siege here. Now, I highly doubt any of these guys have any ships. No, they don't. They have six ships total. So we can easily win there. Don't really need more ships. Uh, I guess having a, a nice uh, treasury would be helpful for the war. We don't have to worry about uh, you know all of our fort maintenance and our, our uh, army and, and navy maintenance costing us too much. So yeah, I guess we'll keep a little bit of treasury here. It could be helpful to have that in the conflict. And uh, then as soon as we get this, we'll, we'll declare war on these three, and then we'll have to do that next episode, unfortunately. I'm glad to see that they're doing well here, uh, getting them conquered. That means we'll be able to get that all done in one conflict, hopefully. Uh, so we now have the claim. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and declare war. And we'll be trying to take over all three of these guys at the same time. All right, uh, so we've declared war. Uh, we are gonna wanna go ahead and pay for everything. I'm gonna use the fleet. It'll make the sieges go so much quicker if we have our fleet out. So we're gonna go ahead and pay for the fleet maintenance, which doesn't go up automatically here. I think only fort maintenance goes up automatically. I don't think the, the army maintenance does either. Uh, so we're gonna want to, of course, raise up our levies, which I don't know if our numbers have increased. It looks like they have not. Uh, but I don't think we need to raise these ones here. Yeah, I really don't think we should. Now, we could have a better marshal by doing so. We do have to pay for them, though, and then we can never... I mean, we do have a nice treasury. Uh, but yeah, we can never, uh, you know, put them back down. Uh, now, this should be a pretty quick conflict, so... Yeah, I guess we'll do it. Why not? I'd like having the better the better marshal there. All right, so let's go and get these guys moving. They do have a distance to go. Uh, our fort is right there, so that will not stop them from coming in here. So let's just go over to here for now while we wait for the rest of the army to arrive. And then we'll have them all come down here together and attack our enemies here on the coast. Uh, we'll wait till our fleet gets their morale back up. And once they do, then we'll have them come over here and help us out with those sieges. So those will progress so much quicker. Uh, you, you do want to have your fleet out here uh, blockading a fortification that you're attacking. Otherwise, it does uh, it does increase the time it takes to, to take that fortification by quite a bit if you have to wait. Uh, we do have the low food supply, but of course that's because of the troops we just raised. That's not a problem. And there's nothing here we want to do right now. Yeah, we're good to go. All right, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and end today's episode here though. One thing I should do now uh, while I'm noticing it as we're going to start the integration here. Uh, so we're going to be integrating them, and it's going to take us until May 459. So let's go ahead and do that. Start the integration of one of our one of our subject states. We've almost got these guys up as well, so we'll start uh, integrating them too once we get them up to 190. Uh, so slowly integrate all of our subjects, and then yeah, next next uh, episode we'll we'll conquer these three real quick, and then it'll be 458. And we can finally attack our main rival, the Etruscans, here in Italy. Uh, so, should be exciting. Uh, we've burned off most of our aggressive expansion as well, so that's good. And we almost built our manpower. Actually, we are at the max, because it looks like the maximum was reduced. Well, probably because we just pulled up these troops here. Uh, so, so yeah, we've, we've got the, the manpower up pretty high as well. Uh, so... We'll end the episode here. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.